in this edition of Detroit Performs. A Detroiter goes from painting the streets in Detroit to creating art around the world. This is Fiat. I did a live demonstration at the uh, auto show and I became an official Fiat artist. A lifelong musician uses passion to create an organization to help youths find their craft. When you strip away this veneer that we all too often put on classical music, you're left with the pure art. And especially young people respond to that. It literally resonates within them. Credit Card Detroit takes us to the Heidelberg Project Family Fun Day. This is a biennial event we do every other year where we bring together families from across the suburbs to interact with families in the community. It's a fun event. We've got all kinds of wonderful things going on. And a multi-talented artist expresses himself through music and sculpture. Sculpting is, is my place to disappear from the intensity of the music business. It's all ahead in today's episode of Detroit Performs. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Detroit Performs, everybody. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today I'm a little outside Detroit because I want to show you around the University of Michigan's Arthur Miller Theater. The theater has just 280 seats, making it an intimate stage on which to act and a great way to watch a performance. The theater hosts both student and professional plays. Our first segment highlights a man who is the pioneer of graffiti in Detroit, Antonio Shades A.G challenged the thought of the art being a negative by proving that graffiti is an art form that should be proudly displayed and cherished. Here he is to tell us the story. I am a vandal. Do you, I am. That's exactly what I am. I'm a vandal. What happened is that I, I ended up becoming a vandal because that was the only way that graffiti could actually be applied. And so eventually in time, I kept doing the graffiti and kept getting in trouble. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's what happens, you know? You, you go out with a couple of cans that are, you know, and you, and you paint an illegal surface, and you try to do your artwork. Um, yeah, you're gonna get busted if you get caught. Yeah, it's illegal. Graffiti was based off of beautifying your neighborhood, you know? It's, it's for you to, uh, to make your neighborhood look better when it's blighted. And so that's what I did, you know? Like, I wanted to make it look nice. You think about, uh, you know, like uh, um, uh, Jackson Pollock, you know? He died drinking, you know, driving off the road, right? You know, so all these people that you idolize as artists are huge addicts. So I didn't find that my addiction for alcohol was gonna be such a bad thing. I thought, hey, I wanna do it. I, I ended up putting myself in a world of hurt and being, um, uh, what did you say, kicked off of my own island called Detroit. I, uh, I ended up going out there, getting sober and getting um, probably one of the most kick-ass jobs I've ever had, which was uh, being a garbage man. So what happens is I'm working, garbage, boom, phone call out of nowhere. I ain't even had a cell phone ever. So I don't even know where he got this phone number. Young lady on the other side. She goes, hey, I'm from the DIA. I need to employ you <laughs> or ask you to donate art to the New Wing um, uh, uh, charity event. I didn't know anything about this. So I was, cause I've, I hadn't been doing anything for three years. And so um, I go, yeah, I'll do it. So I took vacation time off and I did it. Boom, there you go. You, you're an artist, even though you're a garbage man. You're an artist now. Most of the stuff that I do, like these, um, these are canvases that I just did. Uh, I do the scrubbing bubbles. I did that for a client. Um, 
I've done uh, Michigan State University. This is inside my my studio, this picture here. And um, I constructed a 60 foot canvas and made it into four pieces. And um, it's hanging now. If you go to Holden Hall at MSU, it's a permanent installation at um, Michigan State University. Um, I have two of them. Uh, that's one of them and this is the other. And then you can go and that's the other picture of it installed. Um, actually the inside of Quicken Loans, which is another client of mine, I did all the floors. When you go into it, when you walk into Quicken Loans, you'll be walking on my graffiti on the inside of the, the headquarters, which is downtown Detroit. Um, here's more artwork from it. This is like the kitchen area. This is staged out. Um, this is Fiat. I did a live uh, uh, demonstration at the uh, auto show. And I became an official Fiat artist at that time. So I did this live. Um, there's videos and all kinds of stuff. Um, this is me painting it live. And it was a big hit. Actually, it turned out such a big hit till they wanted me to paint the inside of their headquarters. So I ended up doing this picture. They kind of snuck me in and I came in and did the office and it's quite large. Um, this is a size, it just, it'll show you how big it was. I did it in a couple hours. Um, then uh, I have Dan Gilbert's basement. This is his uh, mini basketball court I did. I did the whole roundabout of it, which turned out pretty good. If you hired a graph artist, a graph artist, the first thing he's gonna do is paint his name on the wall. Cause it's a, it's a very egotistical sport. I'm very blessed to do what I do. And I'm very happy what I'm doing. Because you know what? There's a lot of people that really wanna be and do what I do. The coolest thing though, is that I don't know what's gonna happen the next day. Because you know what? I live for the day. So I'm really happy in just doing what I do and enjoying myself and enjoying my kids, my family, and just enjoying me. So in order for me to tell you what's going to happen next, I can't. To find out more about Shades and all the other artists you'll see here today, visit DetroitPerforms.org. Our next artist grew up thinking there should be more opportunities for African Americans and Latinos in classical music. So he took it upon himself at a young age to create those opportunities. The result of Aaron Dorkin's hard work and dedication is the Sphinx Organization. Imagine if you've been told all your life that um, the reason that there aren't more blacks or Latinos in orchestras is that they're just not out there. A lot of people will say, oh, it must be tough. You're going into inner city environments with classical music. These kids don't want to have anything to do with that. There is a thought that urban kids just want to go like this and listen to rap. <laughs> but um, obviously, that has never been the case. It's not an exclusionary genre of music. You, you can love this and love hip hop, and you can love this and love other forms of music. But there's something in it for everyone if you're exposed to it. When you strip away this veneer that we all too often put on classical music, you're left with the pure art. And especially young people respond to that. It literally resonates within them. Well, I'm in my office at Burton Memorial Tower, and this young man comes in. We sit down, and out of his mouth comes a big, bold vision. I am blown away, because what this guy is imagining is the transforming of American orchestras. Well, I think early on, it wasn't just a, a good idea. In other words, that this is a problem that has been intractable in our field for many, many years. And beyond that, I, I kind of, I didn't just have a sense like, oh, let's just have diversity and that would be great. I did have very specific ideas on a way in which we could address the diversity. It goes in the face of what everybody was saying, is that the reason you don't have more blacks in the orchestra is that they're just not out there. And here was a kid that said, they're out there, I'm gonna prove it. It's nice to have an idea, 
uh, but, uh, but you have to be able to back it up with the thought and the preparation that you've laid out. And then you see the character of the person. You see in his soul, I've been there. I don't like what I see and I want to change the world. I found that irresistible. Aaron is passionate. Um, he's extremely dedicated. Um, he's a cheerleader. Most artistic people are not organized. <laughs> um, and most very organized and regimented people are very artistic. So it's rare to find a person who is a combination and has strong skills on both sides, which is probably one of the big reasons why this organization has seen so much success. Well, we are the national organization focused on diversity, not just in classical music, but in the arts overall. Our programming literally puts an instrument in the hands of young kids for the very first time, all the way up through to helping develop professional careers. What Sings is doing makes the community feel more inclusive in the sense that there isn't any restriction on what kids are exposed to or what they can do. What I think is great is that Sphinx makes it free and available to a lot of children and families. Um, for a lot of children, um, you know, it's sports. Here's a different avenue for them, and it's about exposure. So when we give a young person the opportunity to be exposed to this art form and then the opportunity to actually train and learn how to use this art as a way to communicate with others, we see it transform their lives. If you've ever been to any of the Sphinx events and you see these kids sitting in the audience, what you see are very well-mannered, well-behaved um, people, young people. And when you're in that moment of an incredible artistic performance, inclusiveness is by default inherent in that experience. You sit next to, you sit across from people from different backgrounds, but yet you share this similar human experience. And I know that for the competitors, it's really fun for them to actually be in an orchestra where it's a lot of people like them. There's a little bit of a different soulful element that runs through it. So I wanted to make sure that we developed a structure where everybody literally wins. And we do that by enabling all of our semifinalists to receive full scholarships. But the amazing thing is, because we have this environment that has a sense of a collective ascension of all of us, they have spontaneously and un, uh, you know, encouraged by us, have group hugs. And I have no idea what they're saying. I know no one likes to lose, but I think it's easier to lose when you feel like you're amongst friends. <laughs> It also tells you the quality of character of these students. Tells you, um, you know, how they were raised, frankly, because you're not hoping that, you know, that your win means somebody else's failure. Because there is this mutual respect, and they know that no matter what happens there, they will continue on as musicians together. <laughs> Check out more about Aaron Dorkin and the Sphinx organization on DetroitPerforms.org. The Heidelberg Project is an outdoor art project that has been around since 1986. It's been beautifying neighborhoods in Detroit through art and design by painting houses and their surrounding areas. Credit Card Detroit takes us to the Heidelberg Project's Family Fun Day. Hi, I'm Janine Whitfield. I'm the director of the Heidelberg Project, and welcome to Family Fun Day. This is a biennial event we do every other year where we bring together families from across the suburbs to interact with families in the community. It's a fun event. We've got all kinds of wonderful things going on, and I'm so honored and proud to be the executive director of the Heidelberg Project. The Heidelberg Project started in 1986. We've been doing this for 27 years. There's nothing like it around the world. The concept of recycled and found materials to create the art installations speaks to how our communities have become discarded. But when we pick these things up, dust them off, add color, we're literally breathing new life back into the things 
and hence the community. So this area that you're standing in is one of the oldest African American communities in the city of Detroit. But the artist's perspective is by celebrating all the dots, we recognize all people and believe all people play an important part in the resurrection of the city of Detroit. I would say that when you're traveling down Heidelberg Street, there's two, three key things you're going to always see throughout the project. The shoes, which talks about our journey, and it talks about the souls of the people. The faces, faces in the hood, faces of me, faces of you. The faces are what we're all about. It's all about the people. And then finally, the dots, celebrating all races of people, bringing people together, not just from the Michigan area, but from around the world. We've had over 140 countries visit the Heidelberg Project. You can view more of Credit Card Detroit Citizen Reviews on their Facebook page and YouTube channel, which you can find through DetroitReforms.org. Now let's take a look at some fun arts events happening in and around Detroit. After winning the National Banjo Contest as a teenager, Tony Furtado was hooked. For years, he gave his full attention to pursuing a music career, but recently, he returned to a past love as well, sculpture. Let's meet Furtado and find out more about him and his many talents. Some people would call what I do Americana. It's mostly original songs, driven by slide guitar and banjo, inspired by American roots, meaning anything from blues to old time mountain music to rock and roll. When I was 11 years old, I had to do a report for um, my music class. One of the projects was to make an instrument. I didn't hear the word orchestral. So when I actually got the real instrument, the real banjo on my 12th birthday, I remember trying to plank out do 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 <laughs> you know? During high school, I was getting good grades, but I would always focus on learning theory, learning classical theory, jazz theory. Then I'd get home and I'd practice for six to eight hours. And it was around that time that a friend of mine said, you should enter the National Banjo Contest. Like, uh, really? <laughs> he said, yeah, man, you'll win. I said, like, nah, what? So uh, I actually started preparing for it when I was about 18 and worked up some versions of some tunes. And I entered the contest, the National Banjo Contest, and I ended up winning. And um, it was kind of a big boost to my morale and to my whole way of thinking about, well, maybe I could do this for a living. I went to college as a fine arts major, but I snuck into a lot of the music classes because um, I kind of knew I wanted to be a musician for a living. Um, but I couldn't really do both, you know? Sculpting takes so much time. So when I got the opportunity to hit the road, uh, I left college to do that and 
I left sculpting. Tony toured with established bands and had a solo career on the banjo. He learned slide guitar and has spent the past two decades performing Americana and bluegrass music all over the world. A cooking on a rainy morning, a cooking on a rainy night. Staggerly and Billy Deline had a great big fight for the bad man, Crew Staggerly. Mr. Line to Staggerly, please don't take my life. I've got two little babes and a darling loving wife. Oh, the bad man, Crew Staggerly. Oh, now what I care about two little babes and a darling loving wife? She done stole my stitch in half. I'm gonna take your life, oh the bad man, Crew Staggerly. About five or six years ago when I moved back to Portland from my L.A. stint, I just got the urge to uh, start sculpting again. I said, I can't hold this back anymore. Sculpting is, is my place to disappear from the intensity of the music business. This part of the process is the, the funnest, you know, actually sculpting and, and looking where I need to add, add the clay or subtract or, you know, add a little bit of pudginess here or there, and, you know. It's like all the little fun little details. I just love, like, making the little things, you know, getting in there and make the ear, figure out how to make the meerkat ear. <laughs> What'd you do today, Tony? Well, played my banjo a little bit and made a bunch of meerkat ears. My favorite part of the sculpting process is the exploration. It's discovering where uh, a sculpture can go, and once I kind of get an idea of where it's going, then it's, it's like I, I feel like I've found a cool path, you know, when I go right down it. get in the gallery you know that's all plans for the future but for now it's just uh, it's my learning space and my fun place it's my happy place <laughs> Working on a song with Stephanie Schneiderman. She's a singer-songwriter and his wife. I think when I'm writing a song, I'm crafting it. I know that some people think, you know, there's all these songs in the ether, you know. I'm just finding it and pulling it in. I don't think that's the way it is for me. There's not one way a song has to go. There's not one way a tune has to go, you know. You're crafting it, you're going whatever direction you're, you're exploring. You know, they're explorations, pretty much. Like a whisper in the morning Watch you wait away And all your golden, broken moments They can't make me stay They can't make me stay
I feel like I have a pretty good balance. I feel like I'm in a really good space with it all, you know? If I can make little discoveries, if I can explore avenues of something, either with an instrument or with clay, that's something that's just the root of what I love doing. Furtado has released 15 full-length CDs and tours regularly. For details, visit DetroitReforms.org. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. For more information on arts and culture, visit DetroitReforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on upcoming arts events. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'd like to thank the University of Michigan Arthur Miller Theater for letting us hang out here today. Don't forget to come on and check out a show for yourself. Until next time, get out there and show my Detroit Performs, y'all. I am DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.